All right, we are live, and Robbie is freaking me out as usual. I'm just doing my own what thing. What the man. fuck, man? <laughs> <laughs> are you like squeezing some like ghost girls? All right, we are ducks? live, and Robbie what? is right, right, freaking me out live, as Robbie usual. Is, or, it, it could be a ghost bitch. What ass. the fuck, man? <laughs> <laughs> One or the other. Oh my god, I got like three different oh. versions of Twitch screaming in my ear. <laughs> What's going on, guys? Welcome back to Beastly Thoughts. Hello, chat. Hello, Beastly. Hello, Robbie. What's happening? Slightly uncomfortable with Robbie right now. Again. <laughs> what else is new? <laughs> what, what else is new? Sort of plan, as I hoped, but. Well, guys, <laughs> now I don't know for sure. Are we in episode, uh, what episode is this, Robbie? 137? 137, yes. I believe. 137, no guys. This is the last episode of Beastly Thoughts of 2016. This is the very last episode of the I know people are like, what are you? No, not not the last episode. Last episode of the year, guys. We won't be back next week. Uh, as you guys may or may not notice, next week is a pretty important week when it comes to family time. And, Festivus. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so Got my festival week, pull up. We're going to wrap it. Take the trials <laughs> of manhood on Sunday. I oh, feel like I got a good chance of taking it against these two 15-year-olds. <laughs> Unless they decide to team up, then you, you probably do. <laughs> if been working out, they're... been eating more. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> those like counteract one another, but okay, <laughs> sounds good. I'm really looking forward to the show, guys. It's been a great week for me. Uh, when I don't think about work, it's been a great week. Uh, I really missed you guys. <laughs> it's weighing heavy on my heart that after today's episode, we won't be back together until 2017. But that's kind of a celebration, too. 2017, yeah. it's going to be a great new year. Lots of new games coming out. Good riddance 2016. Good riddance. It's been an insane year. <laughs> a lot of horrible shit has happened. 2016. <laughs> I, you know, I, I've seen lots and lots of friends become enemies over some of the situations that have occurred in 2016. So I'm looking forward to all this stuff being behind us and pressing forward with a, a wonderful new year. With that being said, welcome to the show, guys. And I guess we're going to get into what we've been playing. Robbie, would you like to tell us what you've been playing this week? Absolutely. So one of the games I cannot stop playing right now because I'm having so much fun with it, is Dark Souls 3. That game gets harder and freaking harder as you go on, but it's very fun with friends. Man, I gotta tell you guys, if I didn't have my friends with me, holy shit, I'd not get this far. But the game is hard as shit. It's a ton of fun. I mean, yeah, it's Dark Souls. You've probably played it before. You probably love it. Maybe you hate uh, it. Quick, I quick question. I, I played a little bit of Dark Souls 3. You know, I got it for me and my wife. Mm -hmm. I beat the first boss and, and stepped away. Because there's so many other really? things going on. It's one of those situations, right, that I don't know exactly what it was. I can't really, you know, rub the crystal ball and see exactly what situation created this occurrence. But I wanted to get into Dark Souls 3 immediately because it was the next thing for me following Bloodborne. Mm. I'll definitely do mm -hmm. it. But how does it stack up to you in comparison to Bloodborne? I love Bloodborne. My brother just got his PS4 Pro, first PlayStation 4, might I say, fucking Joe. First PlayStation 4, <laughs> and he Joe. got the Pro. Just and now then, he like, got the first... Oh, we got the pro. Yes. Yeah, that's the very Joe. first one he's ever had. He's Joe's fucking looking kind of sexy tonight. And he got the <laughs> fucking PlayStation VR like a week later. I was like, Ooh, yeah. Joe has made a turn. <laughs> yes. I don't know what's going on. But like all within one week, he had better shit than me. And I was for the last like, three years, I was talking shit about him. I said, put the, put the Super Beastly. Nintendo away. Fucking it up, Beastly. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Not living fucking up to your legacy. <laughs> But Joe's Can't live up to your brother. So Joe is just showing you up. <laughs> hey, look, I was never allowed in the front seat anyway, okay? So just let him keep it. Fuck. Joe's still so up I, in that front seat laughing at is, you. Right? Laughing is, at right? you. God making faces it. at you in the rearview mirror. Stop. Stop. <laughs> Stop. How did we get to this? I don't, I don't know why no. dad would let me in the front seat. I don't know what kind of hierarchy shit this was. <laughs> God damn it. Anyway, look, Joe's favorite game has been Bloodborne. He's gotten quite a few now, including The Last of Us. Uh, and he said Bloodborne is probably one of his the greatest games he's ever played in his life. He said it's, the to him, the spiritual successor to games like Castlevania, which, of course, he'd always borrow my Super Nintendo mm. to play Super Castlevania. Wow. How does uh, uh, Blood... Um, I'm sorry, Dark Souls 3 stack up to Bloodborne, in your opinion, Robbie? Well, I mean... Now, I've, he I've heard that they've taken some things from Bloodborne and actually kind of shoehorn them into the Souls series as well, right? 
Yeah, that's what I was going to mention is that Dark Souls 3, I think, is the first Dark Souls that really takes influence from Bloodborne. It is a little bit darker. I think it is, like, yeah, definitely darker in tone. You know, it's still fantasy. You still have knights and dragons and all that, but it definitely does feel a little bit more like Bloodborne, of course, because that was the last game they had made. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, it feels similar, but it's not, you know, there's still different enough games where it's not like it's exactly the same. I mean, okay. I love both games. I think it stacks up and holds up very well. So has has Blood, Dark Souls three been taking up all your time? Has there been any little side hose in your life? I mean, you know? mostly because my friends have been bugging me so much to come play it with them. Like they're getting hardcore into Dark Souls. They're almost at the very end of the game. Side hose huh. jokes, Jesus Christ! <laughs> hey man, it's, it's the end of the year. I'm gonna start this shit early. Okay, right? I'm sorry. We're gonna, we're gonna make we're gonna this. make this whole show the last 15 minutes of every other show. Yeah. <laughs> the most dick jokes we ever had in one hour. Yeah, yeah okay. we set a new though. record. New record yeah. on Twitch. I, mean, <laughs> I, I was thinking about something. A lot of the shows that we do, you guys have a cold one, a beer, and I always feel like my dick is shrinking every time I see you guys take a nice cold swig of that sweet nectar of the gods, and I pull up a bottle of water. And so I told my wife that I'm going to start buying beer, even though I don't drink. I'm going to start buying Old Duels. Mm -hmm. It tastes like. It tastes like beer, and yeah, I'll feel like a man. Yeah, mm. I'll feel because you know it's rough. You might look like, like a man drinking yeah. a beer, but inside you'll know that you're exactly. inadequate not drinking beer. It's not. It's not real. <laughs> uh, yeah. Near beer. I mean, you, you know it's rough. <laughs> if I'm feeling bad when Robbie's drinking a beer and he just got old enough to drink one, holy shit! But, <laughs> you know, I used to I, used, I used to drink that stuff all the time. I used to go to the bars, and if I was the designated driver. I'd still want to drink, right? But you know, you can't. You can't drink. You're a designated driver. So I drink. Uh, I drank drink near beer all night. It was <laughs> nice. You know, it was fine. Like I didn't really know the difference. I still had fun anyway. But for yeah. some reason, just drinking non-alcoholic beer was enough of a replacement, as opposed to just drinking water or soda or something you all got night. That right. You, you know, it's just right. enough. Now, see, I I drank. Yeah. I used to be a big drinker, and I, I quit drinking in 2010. And that year, after 2010, all through 2011, I would go and buy old duels. I'd buy the bottle, the cans, whatever the situation was. We had family gatherings. People were getting shit faced, and I'd come in there with a, you know, a case of old duels, and I'd crack those bitches and I'd kill them. And there was one situation that actually stopped me from buying old duels. I thought I was doing society a favor. I saw a young guy standing in front of the corner store by my house. He looked like he was 14. He had a black and mild in his hand. I used to smoke too. And he was smoking a black and mild. He looked like he came from middle school. And I walked up to him and said, hey, man, I said, are you, you shouldn't smoke. I said, especially when you're so young, you're going to become dependent on it. And years later, you're going to really wish that you didn't. And he looked at me like, he said, what do you mean? I'm, I'm old enough to smoke. I said, no, you're not. And I was sure I was right. Yeah. And I swear it was like it was choreographed. He reached in his pocket like he was doing a card trick. He pulled out the right card immediately. It was his ID. He said, look, man, I'm 18. He handed me his ID and he was 18 and I looked at it. There was nothing else I could say. And then he looked at my hand. He said, why are you buying fake beer? <laughs> and that was <laughs> Checkmate. Damn, man. Wow. <laughs> that was the last case of old ghouls I ever bought. So I swear. Like, as you get older, have you noticed that kids look younger to you? Mm-hmm. Because when I was 15, I felt like I was an adult. Yeah. You know, I I couldn't do things adult could do. I still I was still lorded over by the administration of adulthood that seemed so unfair to me because I didn't understand that they had my best interests at heart. Yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, at the time, like I felt like a just a almost an adult. Even at eighteen, like really, I felt like an absolute adult. Like my body felt like an adult. I didn't act like an adult by any means. I still don't. <laughs> <laughs> I can relate to that. Being twenty years old, yeah, yeah, that right. Yeah. But, like, when I saw other people of my age group, like, they looked old to me, mm -hmm. right? But now when I look at, like, an 18-year-old or a 15-year-old, with, with some cool. exceptions, some people look younger, some people look older, right? Look older, yeah. Uh, like, I'm like, I was never that young. Yeah. <laughs> like, I never looked like that. <laughs> when I was 15, I don't want to say what I was doing. <laughs> yeah. let's, just, let's not It was that. probably illegal. Yeah. <laughs> And, like, I can't imagine. Uh, I don't know. It's weird. It's weird. One, one day you're going to have to share some pictures with me, and I promise I won't put <laughs> hey, on the internet. Hey, I mean, take it <laughs> with me. I'm 20 years old, and I look like I'm 13, so. Yeah. 
At also, least when you I was finally 16, admitted. I had a beard, Thank so <laughs> that, yeah, that was I a thing. I, I don't know if Robbie actually has a beard because he told me that sometimes he rubs super glue down here and goes uh, and does this on, you know, girls' body parts. So I don't know what's going on. But go ahead, Brian. Uh, when I was, I remember being in high school and looking at yearbooks from like way in the past, like the seventies, and like these dudes are rocking like mutton chops and you know hair down to their shoulders, and I'm like, damn, those yeah. dudes look old. So I wonder, maybe just the miracle of modern science makes people look younger for longer. It's 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 in the food. Uh, my dad showed me his uh, his yearbook. Some of those fucking guys look older than the teachers. Yeah, yeah, I mean, some of these guys had full beards. I'm talking like yeah. 17 years old. I was like, shit. Yeah, it's, I had to be in my 20s before I could feel adequate about my beard. These guys. I, yeah, I can't really grow a full beard yet, so oh. don't worry. Here I had to grow a beard in high school. I found it annoying because I just didn't like shaving. Oh, you know what? I started growing one in high school, and my <laughs> teachers thought that it was offensive. That's when the the politically correct, uh, you know, environment I guess became more prevalent. Some oh, of the boy. other kids are saying. You need to shave it. And teachers are saying you need to shave it. Why? Some of my teachers. How is a beard offensive? Ask ask Miss Blumenthaler. I threw up on her I I threw up on her desk too. Well that's offensive. Uh, (laughs) Yes. That's the offensive part where that comes in. Maybe you just still had some puke in your beard. (laughs) You need (laughs) to shave that, that, man. This this isn't a good look for you. (laughs) So last week Oh, you went mute. Am I back? I think yeah, I that fixed it. Yep, you're back. <laughs> so last week, Briar, you mentioned to me about a game I was playing that I was having a lot of fun with, The Last uh-huh. Guardian. Some of the issues that you've heard from yeah, people yeah. regarding whether or not this game is good or bad. I ran into one of these situations, and it it infuriated me so much that I haven't played the game since. Really? What? Can you tell Ooh. me a little bit about the situation without being too spoiler? Well, I told Trigo to do something. He just said, fuck you, guy. Well, basically, <laughs> that's basically what I, too? I Yeah. So oh. there's, there's this one portion of the game where Trico has to go up, just straight vertical, jump after jump after jump. And uh-huh. uh, I got to this section of the game, and this was last week. Like, No, it was this week, probably Tuesday or Wednesday. And there's this one portion where you get to a particular jump, and there's a ledge right there. It's right there. Not like it's, you know, 50 yards away. It's probably 20 yards. It's right there. It's not like one and of so, those ones where I think I can make it. <laughs> no, it's not, well, it's not one of the ones where I think I can. It's one like I know I can. I can almost yeah, reach it. It's one of those ones Mario up, can okay. just run right over, right? Yeah, yeah. And so <laughs> I'm on yeah. top of this damn thing, and I'm, you know, telling him to jump, and I'm doing all the motions, telling him to jump, and Kate's watching with me. And part of the reason I feel like I haven't played is because I had a witness to this shit. I can't really save face. She was right next to me. And I'm telling him to jump. And I swear to you, he turned around and jumped all the way down every single jump <laughs> every, to the bottom, oh. okay? To the very bottom. I don't know if anybody else has experienced this, and I don't know if it's totally a great game-breaking situation, but it was the immersion-breaking thing for me. He jumped. It had to be seven jumps, at least. I was at the very top. And so I was telling him to jump, and he turned around on his own, and I was on him. I was like... Oh, it must be another jump over here somewhere. And he looked down and started jumping down. And I'm still telling him to jump. I'm trying so hard. I told him to jump up. I'm like, up. And so he looked down again and jumped down all the way to the very bottom of this oh. cabin. And so it was super frustrating because the, the next por- portion of the game, he does all the jumps up by himself. So you don't really have to make him do anything. So he got to the bottom and stood there. And I was like, what the fuck did you just do? And so I just yeah. jumped. I jumped back on him. And then he looked up and jumped all the way back up. Took about another seven or eight minutes of me up up top, you know, hoping that he's not going to turn around and jump all the way back down into yeah. this castle. And he finally looked at the ledge that was right in front of us and jumped on it. And I turned my PlayStation Four off. <laughs> Save. Yeah, <laughs> I'm with this shit for tonight, man. Yeah. It was really frustrating. And but other than that, I, I know you told me that you've heard of people having situations like this, and at that point, I hadn't. Uh, and since last week, I probably put another two or three hours in. I really love what they've done with the game. But I feel like there needs to be po- possibly some patches in situations <laughs> like that. Uh, but something, another game has come along and kind of saved me. A game that I bought, I think, a week and a half ago during the Flash sale that is by far the worst-looking PlayStation 4 game I've ever played. 
but my wife and I are having a blast playing it. Have you guys ever heard of a game called Seven Days to Die? Yes. yes. Uh, Seven Days to Die is a survival... Uh, it's a survival simulator that is set in the dystopian future uh, run amok by zombies. And for some reason... There's lava on one side of the road and rain, and on the other side, it's like a desert and cactuses. I don't know how they created this world, <laughs> but it's a very, if you look at it just as the visual aesthetic, no one would ever want to play it. It's very similar in play style to Minecraft. You, anything that you see in the world, you can actually break down and you can basically harvest materials from it cars, bushes, blocks, buildings, books, anything you see, you can use, you know, an axe or something to break it down and take its bare elements to create other things. And after a certain amount of days, these waves and hordes of zombies come after you. And so basically you have seven days to prepare yourself and your team, whoever's with you, uh, unless you're doing it, doing it alone. You go out into the world, you destroy trees, you get all this wood, you can create, you know, all these uh, defense mechanisms like uh, poles sticking out of the ground that stab zombies when they run into them, and you can build walls and basically build an entire fortress uh, over We're this We're going to build a wall. Absolutely, we are. Uh, and so, <laughs> shut the hell up. He's going to bring that. <laughs> this is the last show of the year. I don't want to talk not? about politics. No, let's move uh, on. <laughs> but um, there's so much you can do, uh, and you do have to stay alive. You have to stay hydrated. You have to stay fed. There's animals walking around the world. You can, uh, you know, create bow and arrows bows and arrows, axes, uh, any type of, pretty much anything you can think of to stay alive. There's water in the world. Bitch bombs. Right, yes, stop interrupting. Uh, you, there, there, <laughs> there's, there's rivers, and you can go into the rivers, like if you find empty jars and fill the jars with, you know, kind of dirty water, you could take this to a campfire and you can uh, clean the water, you can boil the water, you can drink it and stay safe, you can cook your food, you can eat it raw, but you're, of course you're going to get sick. There's so many different elements to this game but now, you know, Kate and I just survived our seventh day. And it was like the walking dead, the show. It was like so many zombies coming from every direction. And at this point, we had basically, I built, I built a bootleg ass-saving contraption, which is basically we were out in the open. <laughs> what? Okay. Let me explain. We were out in the open, and I, I harvested thousands of pieces of wood. And I used this wood to create these pillars that stick out of the ground. They're like... Uh, Arrows made out of wood, and if zombies run into them, after yeah. a while, they'll kill the zombie. They'll fall to the ground, and they keep trying to cl crawl through it. It'll kill them totally. So I made, like, 600 of those. And I created a huge perimeter, and then I basically built a, I built a wall with a ladder on it. And at the very top of that wall, I made, like, this huge pedestal with all of our stuff, and we could shoot them with bows and arrows as they tried to make it through this, uh, this barrier that I created, this defensive wall. But it was so much fun to do. Every time you die, just like uh, I'm trying to think, I think it's called Zombie or Zombie You. Every time that you die in this game, the backpack that you have is left at that location. And oh, okay. you you respawn, you have to go back. You can choose to go back and get it, or you can just start fresh. Are the zombies they, still there if you go back to get it? They they will be moving around. They don't they don't leave. They they'll like they'll lose interest. Like if they smell you, you can actually set the options. And if they smell you or if they hear you. They can stay interested for up to three minutes, like outside of a door or outside of a window, or they'll keep trying to break through the door or the window to get you. Uh, and so they'll stay there, but by the time you get back to your bag, usually they'll mosey off down a hall or into another room. But it's a lot of fun, and it looks well, like shit. It's, well, it's, it looks like shit. Let me ask you a few questions, because I'm actually really okay. interested in this game. I've never played it. If you... I, I, do you not see any zombies for the first seven days? You get you have all that no. time to build. You'll see no, them come in eventually. You'll just... see th there's zombies sporadically placed throughout the world. It's um there's two modes that you could there's more than two modes, but there's a world that's already been pre-made by the developers, and you can choose to have a world completely made randomly on the fly when you start the game. So one of them is is one that's made with kind of uh, missions and things that you can do. And it gives you tutorials how to build things. The other one is just randomly generated. But in these generated worlds, there are zombies everywhere. Basically, if you go down the street and you go to a populated area like a neighborhood, you're going to see zombies in houses and walking across the street. And uh, some like I found a huge industrial park. There's zombies everywhere. There's zombie okay. dogs. I think they took the zombie dogs from the original Resident Evil 1. So is uh, the goal of the game to last seven days? 
I thought it was, but I'm on day nine now. So now oh. it's just getting, it's just getting harder yeah, and harder. Sense. You won two days ago. <laughs> yeah, I won two days. I, I yeah, wish it was that easy. I, I I didn't know. You know, today Kate and I we just beat the seventh day today. Um, and uh, after we beat it, we thought it was going to say you survived and just start over. But apparently, as the days go on, shit gets harder and it gets more real. Okay. You, you get you get more and more waves of enemies. They're faster. They're more aggressive. Uh, and how long does like feels- a gameplay loop take? Like in real time hours. Uh, each day is twenty four minutes. Oh, okay. So I mean, it, it it takes a couple hours for you to get all the way to the seventh day and and succeed through it. It's much better if you have people to play with. I think this game would probably oh, okay. not nearly as fun if you had to do everything on your own. But I'm really I'm very interested in it because everything that you can create, I, unless there's a secret recipe that I don't know about, but everything you can create and you can craft is right there for you to see. It tells you everything you need to get, how you can make it. And so it's very interesting. I, I mean, if I didn't have all this at my disposal, I'd probably be really frustrated, but it's all baked into the menus and the UI. So if there's something you need to make and you've got a lot of stuff you know, in your inventory, you can go right to the crafting menu, see what you can make, and there's always something you can make. There's always a weapon you can make. There's always bows. There's all torches. Uh, you can make campfires and cook your food and do all kinds of th- uh, stuff with campfires and staying warm because you can catch hypothermia. It's just a lot of really neat gameplay mechanics that they've included in this game. I just wish that they had someone with more of a, a visual flair behind the artistic side of the game because it does feel like Minecraft's retarded step cousin the way it looks it just looks like crap and and that's the thing it, it, it doesn't look talking some mad shit all of a sudden here. I, I, i'm just being real minecraft looks great for what it is and and this game is just maybe a step or two above minecraft as far as uh the way the game is presented it looks very similar to me uh but it is a hell of a lot of fun i didn't think i would have this much fun with it a few days ago I turned it on. It was really late, and I just wanted to see the intro and see what it was all about, and Kate was watching it with me, and I turned it right off, and we played it last night. She got this morning, and she said, are you going to make a whole bunch of videos right now? I said, I don't know. What do you want to do? Because my wife's pregnant. She's very pregnant, and I don't want to piss her off. Mm -hmm. She said, well, I want to play that game with you. (laughs) So we've been playing that all day, and it's been a while since she wanted to just sit down and play a game. She's really liking it, and so am I. It's a lot of fun. That's nice when that happens. That's real cool. It is. For sure. Gotta be pretty dope, man. Having a so there's only there's only one host of the Beastly Thought Show that hasn't divulged what he's been getting into this week as far as gaming, and his name is Briar the Rabbit. What have you been playing this week, Briar? Well, I uh, I'm on uh, part two, or uh, I'm on internet connectivity issues uh, two. Uh, oh wow! More internet oh. connectivity issues. Continuing, <laughs> yeah. Playing through it. Yeah, basically all week I spent I spent most of my week. I'd say it was like a forty hour a week job or a 40 hour job, basically trying to get my internet up and running. It was terrible. Uh, It ended up being the line that runs from the, I think it ended up being the round, the line that runs from the house to the pole. Uh, So I got that swapped out and it looks like it's good now. So that spent, I spent a lot of time doing that, uh, which kept me away from the Witcher, which I'm really addicted to right now, which is um, like that game. I'm loving that game right now. As I got deeper into that game, like, I really appreciate what it does, and I love how it's this huge, expansive thing, but it really does deliver itself in these bite-sized chunks that are really digestible and easy for me to sit down. If I got 20 minutes to kill, I can really sit down and run, like, a side quest in Witcher. And it's and a, feel whole, like it's a I've, self-contained thing, yeah. Yeah, I feel like I've accomplished something, and, you know, it's fun. Um, also, The Dawning in Destiny came out last week, uh, and I've been really enjoying that quite a bit. Um, it's obviously the Sparrow Racing League is out now. Uh, that's pretty fun. You know, it, take it or leave it. I suck at it. I don't know why I'm so bad at this. I'm usually, <laughs> I'm actually usually pretty good at driving games, you know, but with this game, I don't know. I like, I am, I am completely inept. <laughs> so that leads to some frustration. Um, but they also added in this strike scoring system, which I actually really enjoy because as you do strikes now, you get scored basically for performance. Like as you get kills of weapon or kills with weapons, if you get consecutive kills with the same weapon, all sorts of different things you can do, you get scores. And uh, that actually has led to a little bit of enjoyment in the game. Also, if you do a nightfall now, there's like a 30 minute timer counting down, oh, uh, wow. which adds oh, a little bit. Oh no. 
Yeah, oh, it adds man. a little bit of pressure when you're doing the nightfall. This week it wasn't too hard, but I can imagine certain weeks it could be very difficult. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. Um, but yeah, uh, it's been Destiny and trying to get internet working out. And it seems like the internet is up and running. Fingers knock crossed. on some wood. I, I'm not going to wood for you. Because I, I don't know if you remember, this time last week it was running fine. And then on Monday morning, it completely shit the bed. <laughs> like it was wow. just, I was getting like uh, DSL, or not DSL, I was getting like 56K speeds. You know, it was like that Ooh. bad. You know, it was like, it was old school shitty. Do you even know what that is, right? <laughs> no, but I just laughed at it anyways. You know, yeah. you know, it was slow. That's what I'm saying. It was like real slow. I just know slow. it's slow as hell. I don't know how slow, but that's slow. I, it so, was so slow that it was like in and out, right? So it's like sometimes it would be like one megabit per second up and the next second it would be flat line nothing wow oh was, my god yeah, so that's terrible so we, we got it fixed up hopefully hopefully that was the issue it might have been a coincidence i'm not sure uh but you know hopefully moving up moving forward we can get back into some gaming i really want to play some of the games i have missed over the last few months can i say something now, I was going to ask you about this, and it's really, to me, it's very interesting because I feel like you and I share this. We have this deep, dark, ugly demon in our closet that we yeah. both have a ton of, we have a ton of games. A lot of people don't know you have a shit ton of games. Just because you play Destiny doesn't mean that you don't buy the newest stuff. Yeah. Right. Um, and, and with you playing The Witcher, which came out in 2015, which is Game of the Year and highly praised by, you know, gamers and critics alike, now you're finally experiencing it and seeing how awesome it is. I played... A few hours of it, probably less than you at this point. Uh, I've got about fifty hours in. Oh yeah, you're 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 there. How does it make you feel about some of the other games that you have? Because it's like I have a ton of games in there that I, I've never even really given a chance, and and quite a few of them have been very very highly praised. And it's like when you see what you're seeing now with The Witcher, it kind of makes you wish that you had got into it sooner so you can experience it. Like yeah, right when everybody been part of the conversation crazy. as it was yeah. happening. Yeah. Because yeah. now you got to go to a forum that no one's going to respond to anymore. Yeah, that's true, and I've done that too, yeah. Uh, you had to wait for two days and say, oh, we thought this thread was dead. Let us tell you why. <laughs> I mean, one of those situations, and, and I feel the same way. I feel like, you know, I wish I had the time right when the game came out to get into it, but... You know, it's like that scene from Ghostbusters 2 when the Titanic rolled into town and Cheech looked out and said, better late than never, better late than ever, because at least you get to experience it. Yeah, and yes, sure. that was a very old school throwback to a film that probably no one knows about. <laughs> I know. But, uh, of course, <laughs> Wait, what Bobby, film? Bobby, Bobby Brown was in that movie. But um, <laughs> yes, yeah, he sang the theme what song. What movie was that? It's called Ghostbusters 2. And oh. it was a lot worse than the the first film, but infinitely better than the the reboot. But yeah, uh, I'm I'm hopefully I find time, and I'm pretty sure you feel the same way, to get back into some of these games that we spent our hard earned dollars on. Yeah. That are kind of sitting on the shelf or sitting in the hard drive. Like, why are you neglecting me? What have I yeah. ever done to you? Well, I haven't oh. I haven't even bought Gears of War four yet, and I really want to oh. play that. I haven't bought Battlefield one yet. I really want to play that. That's like, there's a bunch game. of games that. Like, I just want to play, you know? Like, I haven't gotten a chance to. So, well, I, I just got to gotta figure out a way to, like, fit it into my schedule. And that's the hard part. The hard part, and I'll tell you like this. You have a, a much more densely packed schedule than I do because you do a lot more stuff online. You do a lot of streaming. You're, you know, you're constantly uploading videos. You're very, very busy. I'm busy, too, with, you know, work and family and YouTube. But I'll make a pledge. When you get ready to buy these games, let me know. I haven't gotten Gears of War 4 either. And that's something I really want to play. I heard great things about that, that game campaign too. too. And Battlefield 1, even though I'm not a big Battlefield fan, I do want to try. Everybody's saying so much about this game. I yeah. love Everybody Battlefield Everybody is, is saying, I, I mean, even game. people who never really got into Battlefield, like it's the best shooter I've played all year. Like me. Yep. Robbie, we're, right we're talking, listen, we're talking American exceptionalism. So we're gonna we're not gonna accept your. I'm just kidding, Robbie. You too. A lot of people have been saying that Battlefield One, it's an amazing <laughs> game, and uh, I feel like you know I I owe it to myself to play it that way that I I can you know give it my own opinion versus saying that I'm just not a Battlefield fan because in in essence Star Wars Battle Star Wars Battlefront is a Battlefield game. It, you know it's made on the same engine. It's very similar in the way it controls. Yeah. Yep. And and I really like that game. So you know, Battlefield One could actually be a game that I 
truly enjoy. So just let me know, Briar. Hit me on, uh, you know, Twitter or something. Let me know. Beastly, I'm about to throw down $100 on this shit. Go buy yours, brother. And then We still do. haven't played that. We were just we were talking before the stream about that VR game that we both wanted to jump into. Yeah, it's called, uh, God damn it, uh, uh, Village of Where... It's Werewolves in PlayStation VR. I'm going to find the title of this game now. <laughs> but it's a, a particular game that Briar and I have been looking at. And we talked about it last week. And we were both supposed to buy it this week. Uh, unsurprisingly, neither of us <laughs> remember right. to do it. In uh, news you know, that shocked nobody. <laughs> yeah, my, my brother um, actually uh, came over last night. He brought his wife, and she wanted to play uh, PlayStation VR. And she, it's called Werewolf Within. Yeah. And um, she played PlayStation VR for about an hour and a half, and she didn't take the damn thing off. And she was dancing. She went to a concert and saw a Japanese cartoon do a concert. She was playing... Uh, I guess it's like tennis, but you use your head in VR. I know you've played that before. You've at least seen it. Yeah. And she tried the Resident Evil uh, Kitchen demo and a whole bunch of other stuff. And she said, wow, this is really amazing. And I was talking to my brother about Werewolf Within. And basically, it's an online-only game where you get in a group of about six or seven people. And these are all real people. You embody this cartoon character. And you're in this old Victorian village. And you can see the village around you as you sit at this campfire. And as you guys discuss... Which of you at this gathering is actually a werewolf that's been killing the villagers of this village? And it's set up very similar to like a traditional board game. There's certain things that you do and uh, they're taking turns and basically giving, you know, your whole conversation about why you are not the, the werewolf and you're trying to convince people. And the person who is a werewolf, you know it the whole time. And basically you're trying to lie your ass off so these people don't get rid of you and from what I understand, it's a very, very fun game. I watched some uh, some Let's Plays of it, and that's something that you and I are going to get into, I'm hoping, very soon, Brian. Yeah, I would Maybe like to that very much. I, I would very much like to play that game with you and the new Star Trek, uh, what is it called, Bridge online. Commander? Yeah, yeah, online, yeah. Uh, and I know Gary Diaz is in chat right now, and he loves, he loves the VR. Uh, I'd like to get him in there, too, because he's hilarious. And uh, he's also been instructing me... Best on how to hook up a PSVR to a PC uh, and play games that way. You, apparently, you can play a lot of games that are meant for the Oculus See? and the Rift. Yeah, oh. uh, and the Oculus and the Vive with a PSVR, which is yeah. great news. I, I saw a video on that uh, in my YouTube uh, feed, and I was like, what? Yeah. This would be exciting because there's actually some of those games are free on Steam. Yeah. So you don't have to even throw your money down just to see if it works. I'd be interested to see. And I like money. Yeah, you're damn right. I need my money. favorite yeah. kind of I, money is the kind that's mine. Yeah, right. <laughs> I, think I think that's my preference too. I like money that I make myself and I earn, and I get to. I don't even spend. care who made it. I just like it when it's mine. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I, have, I have no connection to the earning of said money. You're damn right. Yeah, I just like yeah, money goes right. to me. Oh, and Gary's now, just uh, me in the chat too. He's hell like, yeah, nice. So. Last week, I wanted to address something because I don't know if this is something that's synonymous or something ubiquitous ac across our viewers, but I, I got a comment in uh, the video last week of uh, Beastly Thoughts, and someone thought that Robbie was being underrepresented and and not given adequate platform to speak his mind. And All right, I wanted let's, to give him, let's give him some time here. Five seconds, go, Robbie. Tell us everything you need to. Okay, your Thanks, time Robbie. is up. Yes. Thank you, Robbie. Up. That's <laughs> Did I, I clear that up for Thank that you. commenter, you think? <laughs> All right, so here we go. Thanks, Robbie. Thank you, guys. I appreciate for, the input. Yeah. For clearing Thank the you. air. Uh, we got a little bit of news this week. Like always, Robbie, would you like to get us started with this week's news? For sure, man. So I'm not going to lie. It's kind of a light news week, but this is still something that's interesting to me because I still think this movie is never going to happen. But uh, Mark news. Wahlberg was actually the guy who was supposed to play Nathan Drake, and uh, he's dropped the role for the Uncharted movie, which I didn't see him doing, but... No, yeah. that doesn't make sense to me at all. He'd be a weird <laughs> fit for that. Yeah, I don't get it. doesn't make sense at all. <laughs> Thank fucking God. I'm glad yeah. he's going, too. Yeah. I I like Mark Wahlberg. I got nothing against him, but he doesn't but match up. Role. Like, yeah, that doesn't match sucks. up. And he's yeah. not, like, a range actor. Like, this guy is Absolutely. not Daniel Day-Lewis. Right? You no. know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> like, no, no. I, yeah. he is like that meathead in Stepdad or Transformers, right? And he's yeah. fine at that. Like, he does that job. He's a likable dude and he's good in action movies and he's kind of funny. 
but he's no Nathan Drake or, not- frankly, Han Solo, which was, as far as I'm concerned, what that character is based off Absolutely. of, right? Absolutely. But you really need a special. News. You need a. You need a Nathan Fillion kind of yeah, guy. Absolutely. For that, yeah. you, know? you know what? That, that's a, a very good candidate for for this role. Nathan Drake has this kind of magnetism that, in my opinion, Mark Wahlberg just does, he's not able to really channel. You know, he's a very charismatic, funny, likable person, and it just it's a natural thing. And like you said, I don't think. I don't think Mark Wahlberg uh, possesses the acting chops to convey that convincingly, and he's to me he just doesn't embody what Nathan Drake has ever been. So to me, that's a good that's good news. It's like hearing them say that Samuel Jackson dropped the role of uh, Joel from The Last of Us, and people go, "Oh no, it just doesn't work. It makes no sense to me." Robbie, would you like to continue with our news? I want to give you two this week. Well, Ellie, drop my motherfucking sawed off shotgun. <laughs> <laughs> you got that right. Hey, you know what? Now, now you, you're making me want him to do the role. Hey, I mean, I mean, yeah. To all the people who are saying I don't get enough time in the spotlight, well, here you go. Oh More of me, whether you like it or not. I'm you sick and goddamn it. tired of all these motherfucking mold guys running around the motherfucking planet. <laughs> 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 you motherfucking mole guys! I have no idea what that's, that's from. That's so <laughs> Samuel Jackson. <laughs> oh my god! Jesus. Uh, okay, so since Robbie didn't want to continue, I'll go ahead. In a very uh, controversial move this week, Activision has added supply drops and microtransactions to Call of Duty: Modern Warfare Remastered, in addition to already being a very disliked feature of Infinite Warfare. <laughs> Good God, wow. Activision! Like, take a break with Call of Duty. This is just... <sighs> hey, no, man. fuck with Call of Duty all you want. Keep all your attention on Call of Duty. Don't even <laughs> look over here at Destiny. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. Uh, man, so, so, like, Activision... I don't know what, what happened to Activision, right? Because they were doing, in my opinion, they were doing DLC and microtransactions pretty good. Like, they weren't... I never felt like I was getting racked over the coals by Activision. And a lot of other companies were, you know, hitting those things pretty hard. I but they left they left Call of Duty on its own. I wonder if the sales of the Call of Duty franchise has left less led to this. You know what I mean? It has been declining, steadily You know, declining. because they're not selling as many copies, they need to they need to boost their income through these microtransactions. Mm, I mean, I don't, I don't even know which mic- microtransactions they're uh, including in the game, but as long as it's just cosmetic, I don't see really a problem there. I think it's own weapons. No, they can't do and, that. No, in Modern Warfare Remastered, it's mostly just cosmetic stuff, but there are okay. COD points, there are supply drops, so it's like, you know, they're very, they're on a really slippery slope, though, like very close to going to over the edge. So I don't yeah. know. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's very unfortunate, and we're going to hold the destiny... Here's my prediction for Call of Duty, right? It's it's now on the decline, for real, right? We know that, right? If yes. we can all agree on that, we can move forward with the conversation. It's on the decline. Absolutely. It's going to get to the point where it's uncool to play it. Like, people still play that. Like, you know, COD used to be cool. In two, three, four, maybe as long as five years, all of a sudden, they're going to reboot it, right? It's going to come back with Modern Warfare... They're just going to call it Modern Warfare, right? And oh, it's going to wow. be just back to the basics, boots, boots on, the, on ground. the ground, like badass fighting, no microtransactions. It's going to resurrect that series and become like the most pop- popular thing against the, again in the world. Hey, that, that sounds very reasonable to me. And when, if and when that happens, I can't wait to do the Beastly Thought show on it. <laughs> so, f- so, so four or five years. Okay, you're yeah. saying that this study Episode, declines... But- uh, Fuck. What's that? 500? <laughs> no, no, no. It'll be about, about 380. 250, yeah. 380, yeah. 380, yeah. yeah. We'll just All say right. 380. You know, it's the size of a very small gun for small right. hands. I'm setting uh, a Google reminder. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds pretty reasonable to me. Of, of course, we're going to get a Call of Duty every year, though. So uh, until they announce that they're no longer on the three year cycle of release for Call of Duty, it can't really go away. Yeah. You know, so. It has I to think be it will, something. though. I think that I think it will, right? It's like 
Sledgehammer, unless they come out and knock it out of the park, like at some point, Activision's got to start looking at Call of Duty and saying it's not worth the budget we're putting into this year after year. Well, it's not selling the, the copies. You know, look at yeah. what happened with Assassin's Creed. Ubisoft was all over Assassin's Creed when it was selling, and then it stopped selling, so they took a step back. And I think they'll do yeah. that. You know, they can they can put Sledgehammer on another project, or or Treyarch or whoever. You know, Infinity Ward. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm excited from what I've heard about Sledgehammer's Call of Duty. The rumors are saying it's going to be set during in Vietnam during the 80s, which that sounds really cool. I hope that's true because that's so different. cool. <laughs> it, it does. That's right? cool, man. We've that's heard this so many times, though. It's show. like, you know, at some point we're going to get a boots on the ground back in the day Call of Duty uh, set in, you know, a, a factual war uh, era. Mm-hmm. But. You know, they said the same thing about this Call of Duty, the last Call of Duty, that we were going to get boots on the ground and everybody wants it and Thunder yeah. was talking about it. And it just hasn't happened yet. But you see how this uh, Battlefield 1 resonated with fans. Everybody's tired of the futuristic crap. Mm-hmm. People want something that actually feels realistic rather than guys boosting around the sky and shooting people in the ass. I mean, especially when you got Titanfall over there doing it so fucking good. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, man, it's another game I haven't played in two weeks. Jeez. Me too. I haven't played that forever. Yeah. It was a hell of a year for video games. 2016 was nuts. It was. was. A a big YouTuber that I actually followed said that this year was not that great, and I had to completely disagree. There were so many great games that came out this year. I mean, even from the beginning of the year, there were fucking gems coming out. Yeah. And and at, at this point, I probably would... I would probably be honest in saying that I bought more games this year than I have in any other year in my life. Oh, wow. I, I wow. would say if I had to tally it up, there has to have been at least at least 40 or 50 games I bought this year. Wow. I mean, a lot, Briar. On That's every platform, yeah. It's been kind of crazy. And I've probably played six of them. What do we got next to the news, Robbie? I played one. <laughs> You only play one. Yeah. Well, uh, at least the um, ones that the ones that I did play, I did reviews on, so I could feel like I did something. <laughs> because you know, I beat I beat like four games this year that I didn't review, and t- then afterwards, I talked to my wife. I was like, I beat that game like two weeks. Oh God, it's too fucking late. Now it's not crisp in my memory anymore. So ah, now it's yeah. like games. I tried to do a review like the day a day later. But yeah. yeah, there was like four or five games that I beat that now don't even count because nobody knows I beat them. They just saw some gameplay on my channel. Yeah, I suck. <laughs> no, you're wonderful. Don't worry about it. Yeah. I love, love Canadians. It. What we got next to the news? <laughs> I'm too fucking nice. I got to stop being so nice. I know. Agreed. So. I completely agree. <laughs> November's, November's NPD reports that Call of Duty Infinite Warfare was the best-selling game of November, narrowly outselling Battlefield 1, which came in second. Surprised? Really? I am surprised. I'm, actually, I'm surprised. I am. Yeah. You know, there was a lot of naysayers about Infinite Warfare, like from the jump. And uh, how many Battlefield... people bought Infinite Warfare just to get their hands on Modern Warfare Remastered? A oh, lot. Most of them. A lot of a lot of a lot of people. Did that. <laughs> right but, here. <laughs> that's that's what I was saying though. Um, that I thought that that would be a huge driving force for Infinite Warfare sales, and more than likely, if uh, Modern Warfare Remastered wasn't included, that Battlefield One would have won that. Because to me, a lot of people were super amped for Battlefield 1 from the jump, you know, from the initial release trailer. And um, Call of Duty, when, when Infinite Warfare's trailer came out, people weren't really that amped or excited about it. It was it was the yeah. remaster that got people hyped for it. Yeah. yeah, I agree with you, too, because, like, you look at the sales numbers. Battlefield 1 wasn't that far behind Infinite Warfare. I think you're right, because so many people did buy it for Call of Duty 4. Yeah, Battlefield totally would have beat them. Like, I think way more people were excited for that. Well, that's I another thing. Was. That's another great thing that Activision can use, you know, in the future to keep their sales up. We can charge an extra 20 bucks, throw in a remaster. Of remaster Modern, Modern Warfare 2 next Modern year. Modern Warfare 2. Game. There you go. Yeah. And Briar, look at look at Briar. He's gonna be buying that shit too. <laughs> Modern Warfare 2 remastered. I will, I, I I will, will. too. I love Modern I Warfare 2. So much Modern Warfare 2 when that game came out. I love that game. I would buy that. I hate to say it. I would. I mean maybe maybe uh Dice can start doing the same thing with the I Battlefield just games. Can't help uh, the remasters of old Battlefield games. God. Awesome. Maybe. You know, it's exciting. Yeah. I, mean, I I actually am pretty surprised that Call of Duty beat it because from the jump, man, everybody was down on this Call of Duty. You know? Yeah. It just sure. it 
And even after I played like the beta, I was like, this is not even as good as Modern Warfare. That was my initial impressions. Not as good as Modern Warfare 3. I'm not excited about it. But it's still one. Congratulations, Call of Duty. Please don't send your agents to my home. A new report on the Nintendo Switch says the console will come in just under the Xbox One in terms of power, coming in at around one teraplop, one teraplop of performance. Plop, not plop. <laughs> plop is like a poop. Uh, what, do you mean, what do you mean plop? One teraplop. Oh, now He's I'm messing everything up. up. <laughs> one teraplop. Oh, so, okay, there we go. Okay, the PS4 is, uh, I believe, 1.4 teraflops, correct? No, so 1.8. Is it is it 1.8? Yeah, Xbox One is 1.3. Okay, well, I was totally off on everything. Fuck me. No, it's uh, all good. I love Canadians. So, uh, the Nintendo <laughs> Switch. This thing nice. is going to be powerful enough, I think, at least to compete, especially with it being in handheld form factor. I mean, if you got a small screen, you're not going to need the exact same power as something like the Xbox One or the PS4. Now, when you put it on the big screen, if they're ever able to get more power out of it and make it look a little bit better, it's going to matter to me more then. But yeah. to have to have a game that you could actually have a port of a modern PS4 or Xbox One game on a handheld, it, it won't look as good. It probably won't run as good. But it might run close enough, uh, you know, as a handheld portion of the game or, or version of the game. And to me, that's exciting news. Yeah, it matters to me more how it runs than how it looks. Like, you know what I mean? If they have to downgrade the game a little bit, make it run well. That's what's important to me. As long as it looks visually similar, that's fine to me. Like, right. And there's a lot of things we don't know, right? Like, this is just a rumor. We don't know how much RAM is going to be in the system. We don't know the power of the CPU, the GPU. This is just purely teraflops like this isn't there's so many other things that we don't even know yet so Terra, teraplop teraplop mm, it's Excuse a plop. Me. <laughs> <laughs> the teraplops there aren't enough plops in this system no. uh, now look this is the last show of uh what year is this 2016 <laughs> what are you guys excited about for me the thing that i'm looking forward to the most between two things is the xbox one scorpio and the nintendo switch and to yeah. be totally honest right now and Andromeda. Personally, and Andromeda, I don't know. I don't know how excited I am about that, Briar, to be totally honest. The little scene hanging that I up. saw. Th I'm hanging up right now. <laughs> no, just keep me around. I I'll make somebody smile. But anyway, uh, for me, the things that are most exciting for me, at least, are the Nintendo Switch and the Xbox One Scorpio, and probably more so the Switch. I'm just excited for the possibilities of what it can be. Yeah. And the Xbox One Scorpio is going to be a more powerful PlayStation 4 Pro. That's yeah, it's going to be more of the same, right? Whereas the yeah. Switch is something different. Totally different, and it's going yeah. to be a totally different form factor, and it's going to, you know, open up a whole new, uh, you know, avenue for gamers to play their games in a different kind of way, and quite frankly, in a way that a lot of people have gotten away from. You know, yeah, I haven't the concept is brilliant. So. I mean, it's it's something so The concept new. is brilliant. I agree with you, Robbie. It, it's a con home console and a, and a portable. It's a hybrid, and... It really is incredible to me. I can't wait to see this thing in March. Even as a person, like I don't commute anywhere, right? Like I don't, I don't go on the bus, I don't go on the train. But there's still opportunities for you know what? Like I'm maybe I'm playing a little of whatever game I want to be playing. Shit, it's a nice day out. I go a little, well, do a little go play for a outside. Walk and play the switch, or, yeah. Or, or you might find yourself in a situation like me where it's bedtime. And you walk into your room, and your wife is. I'm sorry, Robbie. Your wife is laying on the bed next to you. <laughs> And she's watching the fucking Sorry. Gilmore Girls, and you can't look over and say, "Honey, I love you, but I don't want to watch this shit." So you either grab your iPad, or or you grab your Nintendo Switch, which yeah, would be something possible. Out. And, and whip it out. So, the Switch, yeah, whip, in bed. Hey, that's how she got pregnant, guys. Look out, honey. Uh, yeah, the Gilmore Girls got me all excited. I'm gonna whip oh, out my yeah. Switch. <laughs> I gotta whip that Switch out for you, baby. Yeah, man, I could, I like, I can see a hundred uses for this thing in my own life, and as long as the games are. Good. What what I'm afraid of is that Nintendo's going to get in their own way like they have so many times in the past, right? Yeah, I forgot to mention that I play I've have been playing Super Mario Run on my iPhone. And I really like that game. I think it's a fantastic iPhone game. It perfectly captures if you like new Super Mario style games, it perfectly captures that on an iPhone. It's what we've been asking for from Nintendo for years is to start releasing their games on you know mobile platforms. Like, it's perfect, except they did something so stupid <laughs> in that you can't play it if you're offline. Huh? Yeah. So you have no. to be online to play the game. 
which for the most part is fine unless you're traveling on a plane or you don't currently have access to you know a cell signal like if you're in a subway station or uh, if you're a child and you don't have you know you don't have the cellular connection on your device and your dad turned off Wi-Fi because his stream is suffering. Sure. <laughs> don't know who that would be. Yeah, you know, it's just such a bizarre decision. Like I you know, I can understand why they did it to combat piracy, but it's like it's come on, man, it's Super Mario. Like let me, I don't need a online connection to play the single player game. That's yeah, bullshit. That is. That's, so like that's, that's what I'm worried with with the Switch. It's like what fucking ridiculous decisions are they gonna make in the on this thing? They're like, gonna screw it up somehow, right? Like, yeah, like that's what people eight are saying. digit codes for friend codes, right? I can't just oh. say Robbie, hook me up with your Jeez. like, shoot me a friend request. No, I gotta share like this eight digit code that's like alphanumeric and like oh. you know, like I'm, all my games are now locked to the console. So if I get a new console, I can't play them on the other console. Like if I want one in the office and one in the living room, I gotta buy two copies of the games. Like that's the kind oh, of God. shit Nintendo is famous for that just drives me absolutely batty, you know. <laughs> And if you got yeah. kids that are prone to breaking stuff, like it's really expensive. <laughs> yeah, hopefully they find a way to make things more user friendly. When I uh, upgraded my old 3DS to the new 3DS XL, God, it was like 3DS porn trying to get these things to work together. It was insane. Yeah, you know, you got to go through so many hoops, and you got to have this tethered, and then you connect this, and then you do. So many questions and what you do it, you can't go back. And I'm like, God damn it, it shouldn't be this hard. It should just be, you know, your Nintendo ID, your Nintendo uh password, and just boom, all your stuff. That's where the game should be locked to. Is your it should be workable more like Sony or Xbox, where you know, my my game collection is locked to my ID. So if I change consoles or if I go over a friend's house even, mm -hmm. I could download that game and we could play it there. You know, like that is so much smarter than having it locked to hardware, which is so much more fallible. Well, hopefully Nintendo doesn't screw up the Switch. Me you too. Know? Uh, yeah, I really hope that, so. That would be a Switch for Nintendo. So, I mean, because they've been screwing up for a long time. Hopefully this thing yeah. is what I think it can be. Because this can bring Nintendo back, man. It really can. You know, we yeah. see games like Skyrim. We see some of these more modern games on the Switch on a portable <laughs> running and looking as good as... Modern know, as, games as, like Skyrim. <laughs> I mean, look, I got modern. Skyrim Remastered. Look, yeah. I got Skyrim Remastered. It looks great, yeah. okay? Yeah. And I only brought that up because they show that, you know, during the reveal yeah. trailer. But stuff that we see now on the PS4 and Xbox One getting released, Dark Souls 3, stuff like that. We see games that are on PS4 and Xbox One on the Switch. It's going to make people excited because you can take mm. it and go. It's going to be... That's a good point. There's been a lot of rumors that From Software is porting uh, Dark Souls 3 to Switch, and they said it's running really well. Yeah, they that did say, makes say me it runs well. Yeah. So, I mean, it's That's great good. news. It's, it's great applications for this thing. Just uh, hopefully they implement it correctly. And it can last... run well on the Switch because it doesn't run well on the current gen consoles. It really doesn't. Yeah. Well, I mean, not all the time. It has some bad frame rate drops, though, at boss fights. Yeah, so did blood, por blood porn. Blood porn. <laughs> <laughs> blood porn had some pretty rough frame rates, too. Oh, okay. And so our last little bit of news uh, is uh, concerning a great movie that I did see Friday night. Rogue One, Star a Star Wars story has had a very successful debut. To no one's surprise, it is expected to make $156 million globally on its opening weekend. Whoa. That, out, that outdoes uh, Captain America Civil War and Batman v Superman. And the movie is great. I know a lot of you guys have probably seen it. Uh, it just I'm really excited to see what Disney does with this in the future, just continuing on with these annual kind of surprises at the end of the year that everybody's super amped for because uh, episode seven, once that finally came out and we got a chance to go see it, it was unlike something that we normally get, you know, at the end of the year, especially concerning Star Wars. And, and with Rogue One, although it was a different type of tale, it was just as exciting. And I think it was very well executed. And if they're able to do this every year, you know, they're going to just continue to clean the clock with these movies. A great film. I'm not going to spoil it, but Briar, I can't wait till you see it so we can talk about yeah, I'm it. I'm looking forward to it, man. Me? Yeah. Yeah, it, I, it, it I'll was definitely a, see it this week. I want to bring the boys. Like, let me let me just say this: an old, an, an, an old school villain from the Star Wars films has an epic scene that just it made me feel like a kid again, like the very oh, first time yeah, 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 seeing yeah, yeah. this. And I was like, this is the stuff that we never saw in the original films. 
and how he handles himself is just so meaningful. I was sitting next There's to a guy about in there. There was a guy about my dad's age sitting next to me. And he had more like a kid than I did at this scene. He almost shit himself. He had his kids with him. And he was just going crazy. He said, well, I can't believe it. And it was really, really exciting. So if you guys haven't seen Rogue One, uh, it's definitely worth checking out. It's a really good film. Explains quite yeah, I'm a bit. I'm looking forward to it. It's a Star Wars film, man. Oh, God, they're the best to see in theaters. They're so good. They're, those movies are magical to me. I love them. So oh, let me, let me ask you guys a question. This is something that the people... <laughs> The people viewing can kind of get into for the last few minutes of the show, and you guys let us know what you think. What if you have the perfect Christmas gift? Something that maybe nobody knows about, you know, just our close coven of you know gamers on the Beastly Thought Show. What mm -hmm. would it be, and why? Now I'll go first because someone who loves me might be That's watching this question. episode. I have everything I want. You know, I'm going to get my own 4K TV. I'm going to get my PlayStation Pro. You know, I got my own vehicles and all this crap. I don't really need anything. But the one thing that I want to get that is really weird, and I'm not ashamed to say it, I want a karaoke machine because I actually can sing. I can sing pretty well. I, yeah, I can oh, sing. Prove it. On some drunken nights, it could be fun. Do it. Yeah. Do it. What do you want me to sing, Brian? Do um, it. That's something Christmassy. It. Do it. Do um, it. Do it. It was a night before. Anyway, look, a karaoke machine <laughs> is really all that's I it? need. It's that was great. magical. <laughs> You're right. Temptations. Beautiful. It was the Temptations the night before Christmas, and I just did it. But I don't really need a lot. I don't need really anything else. I got pretty much everything I want. I have money in the bank. I got clothes. I got shoes. I got games galore. So, like, the only thing I could ever think of that might be a surprise would be a karaoke machine. Let mm -hmm. me ask you guys a question. If there yeah. was something that you, you know, just on a whim, something that you maybe saw at a store that you might enjoy, you felt like it could actually add some fun to your life, what would it be? And you guys let us know in the comments too. Robbie, you go first. If, if someone were to buy you something that would surprise you, but something you think you put to good use, what would it be? That is such a tough question. Do they sell penis pumps in Canada? A lot of them. <laughs> oh, a lot of them. <laughs> Robbie is going to be in a stocking stuffer. Uh, <sighs> it's going to be a big stocking. <laughs> He's turning red. Christ. Right. And this is the episode he told his whole family to watch. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Grandma. I'm sorry. It's the last show of the year. We had to go out with a bang. Bang, bang. <laughs> oh, that was a good one. <laughs> to go around. Good. We love you, Robbie. <laughs> what, while Robbie's getting himself together, I, yeah, I like the idea of a 4K TV. Mm -hmm. But you know what? When people buy me electronics, they they they're not good at it, right? It's like when I buy a TV, man, there are hours and possibly days of research about which TV is the one that I'm going to spend my money on, right? Mm -hmm. And when somebody just like goes to the store, goes to the Best Buy, and just picks out like a, and it doesn't even matter what it is. It's a mm -hmm. TV or a. Uh, CD player or uh, you know what, MP3 player, whatever it is, right? Uh, there is that thought isn't there, right? So it's never what I would have gotten. So I almost always return it. If somebody buys me electronics, I almost always return them. So it's really I'm, I'm hard to shop for, to be honest with you. Well, especially now when it comes to 4K TVs, because there's certain 4K TVs that are more compatible with like PlayStation Pro and I'm yeah. guessing Xbox One Scorpio. Now, like I was uh, at BJ's, I was looking at 4K TVs and I was pricing them. This is last week and I was like, mm, I could grab this one, but does it have HDR? It's like so many questions when it yeah. comes to this technology. Uh, and if you're really into it, you know what to look for versus someone who doesn't. So that would be yeah, like a nightmare was... gift. And like, I don't know if there's one that's perfect either because like I really like those LG OLED displays. Like those things look fantastic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But oh what I God. hear is the latency on them, or like the input lag on them, is terrible. So they might make a really good living room, uh, like movie Mother, watching experience. Yeah. yeah. But if I want to hook up a, a game to it, it's it's not going to be an optimal experience. So then you maybe you want to get an L L 
LCD. Oh, and man, at Best Buy, they have some amazing looking like 4K TVs that are just oh, yeah. incredible. But it's like the response time. Yeah, exactly. Like, it's and, pretty and, small. And so this is the last show of the year, Robbie. I didn't want to take away your answer by making you piss your pants. <laughs> if there was if there was something that you, you would want or something that you saw that you could put to good use in your life as maybe a surprise gift, what, what do you think it would be? A surprise gift to someone else? No, to no, yourself. For you. Oh, for myself. Um, I mean, I don't really know. I think the thing I want the most in general right now is a new PC, like a gaming PC. I would absolutely love a um, pretty high-end one. But, you know, that would be kind of just like, it would just be a nice upgrade. That wouldn't really be like a huge surprise or change my life or something. I don't know. Well, damn, so, man. I need to move to Canada. If I was <laughs> living at home and that's why I got me a gaming PC, man, I'd be doing all kinds of favors. The computer I got I right know. now is pretty good, though, so I, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, hopefully, hopefully you get what you want this year. You got awesome parents. Like Briar said, whatever you, he said before, I don't care to repeat it. Absolutely. So here's to everybody watching the BC Thought Show. All you. I'm changing all you my answer on. to Ghost Answer in chat. It's trampoline. Oh shit! <laughs> that's what I would oh, like. Oh, that's a good one. Now, oh, that's man. the best answer, Brian. But it has to come with a camera and a tripod. So we can watch you. I got all it. that. I got all that. <laughs> I'll do. A, I'll do a camera so you can watch me, and I'll do a GoPro on my head so you can. Oh. You can as I'm as I'm falling off of the trampoline, you it's get a first person perspective, perspective of me going through the shed window. <laughs> oh my god, man! Yeah, well, look. Before we leave the show today, I want to wish you guys, my co-hosts, my good friends. A Merry, Merry Christmas, a Happy New Year. We won't be back officially doing the show. I'm sure we'll see each other online and have some chats before then. But we won't be back to greet our fans and our viewers until January 1st, 2017. So firstly, I want to wish you guys a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And to everybody who's been watching the show and enjoying the content, thank you all so much for sticking with us for another year. And Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Happy Hanukkah. Happy Kwanzaa. Happy, happy, happy to everybody out there. Thank you so much for watching us and being here and, and taking place in this amazing thing that we call Beastly Thoughts and thank for you the for year 2016. 2016, great. And here's to 2017 and the years to come. What is so funny? No GoPro. Don't want to see your old ass break a leg. Stick to destiny. <laughs> 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 he might have a point, bro. He, uh, he might have but maybe my trampoline days are behind me. <laughs> a little bit. Yo, you know Man. what I also want to see? Uh, I, I, I see want people. everybody to have an awesome holiday. Whatever that holiday is, have a great one. Spend it with your family. I hope you really have a great time. But I want to see pictures of all the cool loot you got too. Like, I want to see pics on Twitter. <laughs> like, right. Beasley, that goes to you and Robbie and everybody in chat. I want to see what you guys got. I want to see all that cool stuff. Absolutely. 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 I'll I show can't you a nice picture of a penis I'll extend her I got for Christmas Day. Yeah. <laughs> he knew the proper name. I said, I said a penis bump. So it someone's like been Googling. Almost someone's a little too Googling much knowledge about it. that, right? <laughs> almost a little too much knowledge about that. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Yeah. I guess Suspiciously I don't about informed about the penile <laughs> enlargement oh, yeah. sector. It's, <laughs> it's made by Lico. Obviously, he knows a little something. Way to go, Robbie. Have fun with that thing, my man. <laughs> Somebody won't be needing a tripod this year. Oh, that's a good one, too. An elite controller. That's a good one by M. Robs. Those are oh, nice. Yeah. I think the trampoline yeah. is such a good answer. Hey, that would have you guys checked out the, uh, the elite controllers for the PlayStation yet? Yes. There's two of them. I've seen yeah. them. I did, a, I did a story on them, but no, yeah. I haven't seen them. Out in the wild yet? Are they out? I think the Razer one is out. It's a, it's either out or it's being sent out to like uh, YouTubers and and uh, Twitch guys. Pretty mm. soon, yeah. Like this, they said December. So, well, I'll be interested to see exactly what people think about it. I just bought a new, you know, one of the, the newer PS4 controllers that came with the PlayStation 4 Pro. Yeah, because my, my old ones analog nubs were just they were gone. It looked like yeah. they'd been through fallout or something. What do you think? And so, oh, I love it. It's yeah. great. It is. And it's it's an improvement, right? Yeah, you it, got a red it, one. It is. Yeah, mine's black. Hey man, my whole body's black. Get used to that shit. That's true, right? And that's yeah. not so bad. Yeah. Still <laughs> <laughs> so, though, red would be pretty cool. <laughs> it, is. it is. See, look. You can't tell where my neck is. Me neither. (laughs) 
Oh man, this is some funny shit. <laughs> All right, I think that's gonna do it. Is that it? Happy we love holidays. you guys. We'll see you 2017. Let us know in the comments what you got for Christmas this year. Yeah. Let us know in the comments what you want for Christmas this year. Let us know in the comments if you got socks, underwear, uh -huh. or sweaters because mm -hmm. that fucking sucks. And whoever mm -hmm. sent you that needs to hear from us. Yeah, Thank for you. sure. Grab yeah, we, socks we, every year. I swear, every socks, year. Man, socks, man. Yeah, socks. I thought Canadians were nice. <laughs> <laughs> not these Canadians. Yeah. Not these Canadians. Are a bunch of dicks. Are they French Canadian? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. I mean, they might be. But I don't know of. All right, guys. Now that we've insulted the entire uh, Canadian the entire uh, country fan of Canada, really pissed off my country. <laughs> Again, for the 137th time. <laughs> <laughs> this is so nice. All you, all you gotta do is apologize, Brian. I'm sorry, Canada. <laughs> totally fine now. Let me apologize. I'm sorry to my own country that these these jerks have to host with me. <laughs> Dude, Robbie just called us jerks. <laughs> he, he is getting older. He, uh, the uh, nerve. I think in, in two or three more years, he's gonna leave those PG uh, words behind. Yeah, it's gonna, be, it's gonna be a lot to handle. We gotta get I, our I, licks in while we can. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait till next year when Robbie comes back. He's he'll have, by then he'll have used his penis extender. His voice will be all deep. He'll be talking all kind of shit to us. I can't wait. <laughs> have I'll a beard longer than Briars. Yeah, using a penile extender for the first time. I'll get back to you on that. How that experience <laughs> I don't. I don't know exactly what this thing's for, but I use it to base my turkey. It worked great. <laughs> I mean, that turkey was voiced. <laughs> <laughs>